small kangaroo hop. Does work, but it seems oh, your forward ability is not quite as good as it is in the conventional, more conventional uh, one foot after another. saying what a uh, same pace might be. The one that I'm using now uh, would uh, get rather tiring after several hundred. But this may be a function of the suit as well as uh, lack of gravity force here. Uh, Tranquility Base, this is Houston. Can we get both of you on the camera for a minute, please? Say again, Houston. Uh, Roger, we'd like to get both of you on the field of view of the camera for a minute. Roger, we'd like to get both of you on the field of view of the camera for a minute. Uh, Neil and Buzz, uh, the President of the United States is in his office now and would like to say a few words to you. Over. Be an honor. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. Uh, I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure they too join with the Americans in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. For one priceless moment, in the whole history of man, all the people on this earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done. And one in our prayers that you will return safely to earth. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States, but and of peace of all nations, and with interest and a curiosity, and, and with the vision for the future. Uh, honor for us to be able to participate here today. And thank you very much, and I look forward, all of us look forward to seeing you on the Hornet on Thursday. Look forward to that very much, sir. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston, over. Yeah. Right, clear, Houston. Roger, I've got a P-22 auto optics pad, auto optics pad for you. Roger, P-22, landmark ID, LEM, T-1-110-26-5-0. T-2-110-32-0. Three miles south. Time of closest approach, 110-33-40. Shaft three five three decimal eight five five trunnion four six decimal four nine or five roll zero 
pitch, two, five, zero. Yaw, zero, over. Roger, thank you. Read back my report. Roger, out. Uh, Houston, it's very interesting to note that when I uh, kick my foot, it's very old with uh, uh, no atmosphere here in this cavity. Leave, they seem to leave, and uh, most of them have about the same angle of departure and velocity. This is where I stand, the large portion of them will, will uh, impact at a certain distance out. Are several uh, uh, percentage, of course, that, uh, that will uh, impact different regions out, but it's, so it's highly dependent upon death. Initial trajectory upwards determines where most of the authority of the uh, particle comes down, like the terrain. Uh, Roger, Buzz, and break, break, Columbia. This is Houston. When you track out of high gain antenna limits, request Omni Delta. Omni Delta, over. Come in. I've noticed several times in going from the uh, uh, sunlight into the shadow that just as I go in, I catch an additional uh, reflection off the limb, uh, along with the reflection off my face onto the visor, makes visibility very poor just at the uh, transition sunlight into the shadow. I uh, essentially have so much glare coming onto my visor, I'm going to shadow until uh, the helmet actually gets shadow, and then it takes a short while for my eyes to adapt uh, to the lighting condition inside the uh, shadow area. Yeah. Visibility, as we've said before, is not too great, but uh, both visors up. And I'll be considering yep, what sort of footprints we have and the minimal condition of the soil. And after being out in the sunlight mile, it takes. Uh, and I'm not watching Neil. Neil, you're on the cable. Okay. Yeah, lift up your right foot. Right foot. Uh, it's still your toe is still hooked in it. That one. Yeah, it's still hooked in it. Come in. Okay, you're clear now. Thank you. Now, let's, uh, let's move that over this way. Neil Armstrong has the scoop for the bulk sample collection. This could be as much as 50 pounds of material, rocks and, and uh, soil or what have you. And uh, when they seal them, they seal them in such a manner that they will bring them back under vacuum. This is important to the uh, scientists who will study them once they get back here, is that they open it under uh, pure vacuum. The uh, blue color of my boots have uh, completely disappeared now into this ball. I still don't know exactly what color to describe this other than bayish uh, cocoa color. Seems to be, uh, be covering uh, most of the uh, wider part of the boot. A color that uh, has very fine particles. Uh, Buzz, this is Houston. You're cutting out on the end of your transmission. Can you uh, speak a little more closely into your microphone over? Into your microphone over. Roger, I'll try that. Beautiful. Now I had that one inside my mouth that time. It sounded a little wet. A little wet.
Neil's been on the surface an hour now. Buzz, not quite 20 minutes less than that. In general, uh, time spent uh, in the shadow doesn't seem to uh, have any uh, thermal effects. Uh, uh, we still inside the suit. Uh, there is a difference, uh, of course, in the uh, coming radiation and Helmet, so I think there's a tendency to feel a little cooler in the uh, shadow than we uh, out in the sun. <laughs> 